But when it came time for doing what Jesus came to do, and that was to make disciples, and disciples not to just sit in a room somewhere, only 120 pressed through. Out of all of the millions of people that Jesus ministered to, the blinded eyes that was open, the lepers that he healed, all the folk he sent back to the house and he blessed, only 120. And actually, 12 of them was his disciples that was with him all the time. We are faced with the same thing today. That out of all the people in the world, what God wants to do in the end of time and why today is the day of Pentecost and why heaven still celebrates it is because he's still looking for some people that can get on one accord in the earth and press through in one place, in one place, in one place, in one place. And don't you ever think they didn't have an opinion that's as strong as your opinion. This the way we ought to do. Don't you ever think somebody was up in there thinking we ought to paint it before we, we start praying up in here. Don't you ever think somebody was in there complaining about the, the facilities. They was women just like you. They wasn't going to sit on no bucket, no spider going bite, to bite them. They was men, and they was concerned about where I'm going to sleep because our 10 days, I, they didn't know they were going to be there 10 days. But I'm going to stay here where I'm going to sleep when I get tired. See, if you want all of what God has, you got to be willing to press in and take and do whatever it takes to get God. Part-time getting God going to get you a part-time God or maybe nothing. If you want spiritual power that's going to get you on blast off, you're going to have to develop an attitude that the 120 developed. I'm going to stick it out to the end because 5,000 went down to 500 and ended up 120. And then if you want to be with Jesus when the trumpet sounds, if you don't have that attitude, you're not going to make it. Because them 500 was as legit on that mountain as them 120 was in that upper room. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Oh, yes. Oh, isn't this beautiful? Look at him go. Oh, my God. And he told them, Terry, go to Jerusalem. Go wait on me. Go pray. You ain't going to get no recognition. Go pray. Ain't nobody going to give you no out of girls and out of boys. Go pray. Go wait. Go wait. Don't move. Don't preach. Don't go to work. What if you knew Jesus was coming in 10 days? Would you go to work? I wouldn't. I'd call in. I wouldn't call in sick either. I wouldn't lie. I'd just say, hey, listen, turn, turn my paper with, in to HR. I won't be back. I ain't going to lie. They had come to that place. You had, we all act like they were all, they was all unemployed. They ain't had nothing to do. They had everything to do. They used all their vacation time. They was carpenters and fishermen, and they had stuff. But something happened where they said, I'm not going in. They had some kind of pleasure. I ain't watching no TV. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not sitting down talking to nobody. I'm not answering the phone. Ten days. There's something that they had to give up. All I'm trying to say to you, if you want to get blast off, because Pentecost is a dress rehearsal for the Feast of Trumpets, the blowing of trumpets, It's also, it's a prelude, I should say, to the Feast of Trumpets, excuse me. But it's the ingathering. This is time of harvest. And so what God is doing is saying, 
I'm going to give the spirit to those of you who have the mindset, who want to gather in the harvest. But don't nobody want to gather in the harvest? Well, I'm going to waste good, good Holy Spirit on people who plan to sit around. I'm running a business. A bunch of people show up. Why would I give my resources to people who don't show up? That's just common sense. So many Christians, so many of us have no power because we don't intend on showing up. To show up ain't the, the upper room. The show up attitude in the upper room is give me power so I can go. See, we done made the upper room the wrong kind of place. That's why you ain't getting no joy from it. You done made it the wrong place. It's the waiting place. It ain't the place for everybody to show off. Nobody up there looking at nobody's suit for 10 days. 10 days. So what? You look good when you came in there. After 10 days, they didn't say nothing about bathing privileges, but they probably went down, bathed a little bit, you know, took a wrench off. You can come up in there. You know, just all dazzling. If you did, fine. But it wasn't all about that. Go get in the corner somewhere and pray through. We done made the upper room the wrong place. We done made it. It got to be this way. It wasn't 10 days. All of them got to be jumping around for 10 days. Then we got to hear somebody testify and got to sing this song. That's why we discombobulated. Because we done made the upper room the wrong kind of place. And we ain't got no power. Only kind of power we got is to work the upper room power. And that's why when certain people are not in place, we don't know what to do. Because it never was worship to God anyway. And God is revealing that more and more. And that's nothing against people. It's the system. He's tearing down systems. And we do what we know. We do what's familiar. We don't have to crucify each other. But he says, I will be at the top of every mountain. And the same way it came in is the way he going to take us out. Bring us back to a simplicity. Get us back to one accord. One place. And it deals with our ego. And who I am and who you are. Because after 10 days of being in one place, we ain't impressed with one another no more. Because, you know, we can barely take two hours with each other. And we be like, man, I sit down. I'm ready to go home. I don't want to see you no more. If you say the same thing again, sing that song twice, we won't even let each other sing the same song twice in two hours. Because it's entertainment. It was supposed to have been to him anyway. You play your record over and over. That's why it got reversed and rewind. You play it. I love that. Let me hit it again. You play it. You play that song 50 times. It won't even play. If it's a cassette, you don't want that groove off. But the king, if he said, I request it again, the people are like, no, we don't want to hear it no more. He said, well, I want to hear it again. We, I don't want to hear it no more. So who running the service? Play the song three times and see how many people roll their eyes and do this here. Holy Ghost ain't running nothing. 
Let the anointed praise leader say, I hear the Spirit say, let's sing Amazing Grace or let's sing that song again. Somebody say, you lied. Unto thee, O oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Somebody say, man, I don't want to hear that no more. Sing another song. Well, who is the song sung to? It ain't sung to you, but we act like it's being sung to us. You check out after verse number one the second time. That's proof that we ain't worshiping him. <laughs> Jesus, Acts 2.32, this Jesus have God raised up whereof we are witnesses. God raised Jesus up for one purpose, and that is to make you and me a witness. A witness to do whatever Jesus did. And when we all get to heaven, what we're going to find out is that we didn't heal enough people. Somebody say, I ain't the healer he is, but he made us up to be witnesses. Mark 16 and 16. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. We're going to find that we were supposed to be witnesses. The Holy Spirit came to make us witnesses to cast out devils. It's a shame to go through your whole Christian life and never cast out a devil. We agree with devils. We get on devil on the same page of devils. We talk with devils. We have fellowship with devils, but we were supposed to cast out devils. Not just one person got a deliverance ministry, just a preacher or somebody, some sister or something. We called that person overly zealous. But he said that we were to be his witnesses, and that wasn't mouth only. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. But the way that the world was supposed to know that we've been with him, we were supposed to walk in the same power that he walked in. That's what a witness is. But we got whole systems where you can just be in the ministry and never cast out a devil. If my God, y'all know you know it's true. If the preacher decide he wants to, uh, the Lord is saying leading you to cast out a devil. The people, the, the devil will show up. you start squirming. Who he think he is? I'm, I go to this church. I do this. He's going to cast a devil out of me. Because there's religious devils too. Sickness is devils. But we're supposed to be witnesses. Not just with our mouth. But we don't have any power. We, number one, don't have power to get out of the upper room. We don't have any desire. The fire's not on us to do anything other than come. The <laughs> and then the desire's not for us to be a witness to people who are lost. This is just all over the world. We in trouble. But Jesus, God had raised him up where we would be witnesses. Yes, he's chosen the foolishness of preaching, and you're supposed to say you're a Christian. But Jesus went into places, and he, did, he, he delivered them through casting out devils. Then he got their attention. Then he started preaching. We can't cast out devils. We walking around talking about how the devil got us. Lord, pray for me. The devil, devil was on me. Devil was on me. The devil made me do it. The devil, the devil, devil. That devil busy. Devil, 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 devil on us. Christians, devil got us. Devil in our mouth. Devil in our house. Devil in our body. Devil in our health. Devil in our finances. Devil in our mind. That devil. I mean, so. We must be of a father. Devil got us lying. Devil got us sleeping around. Devil got us drinking. Devil got us cussing, lusting. The devil got us talking about each other. My God, so who running the show? Jesus didn't die so we can have fellowship with the devil. And then when we hear the truth or the light, 
We get mad at, at the person because we don't want Jesus. Jesus, we done made us a little Jesus that he, 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 he okay with our sin. But we're supposed to be witnesses. We all in the suit. We think we got this heaven thing locked up because we can make it to the upper room. But the day of Pentecost fully came, and it needs to fully come in our lives again. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the rich and sins, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And this is what needs to happen. People need to repent, and they need to be baptized. My God, we hardly baptize anybody. The church, people are not being baptized. Church members need to be baptized. Folk need to be repent and be baptized. People need to repent, be baptized, and get the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repent, change. We don't preach repentance anymore. But I'm preaching repentance today. Amen. We need to change. We need to change. We need to change from the inside out, not the outside in. These clothes don't make the man. These clothes don't make the woman. Amen. New hair, new, new nails don't make you. New shoes don't make you. My God, we need to repent on the inside. We need to make confession to the Lord. We don't have to come down here unless we've done something to one another. But we ain't going to do that. We sure ain't going to confess to each other. But before God, we need to repent. We need to fall on our face or our knees. Or if we can't do that, get on our chair. But we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And we don't need to say if because that's a prideful lie. Forgive me, for I have come short of your holiness. The wages of sin, but the gift of God is eternal life. I've come short. I'm, I'm not like Jesus. I'm more like a Pharisee or a Sadducee. I'm a religious zealot. But my heart ain't tender. I don't have a heart for the lost. I don't have a heart for your house. I have no heart for your kingdom. It's just about me and my groceries. The whole church world needs to repent. We wonder why sinners ain't running, because the church ain't running. We don't know what the altar is no more. You call for the altars, the saint act like, what? We act like the Scooby-Doo doll. Who? 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 Not me. Lest they would think I'm doing something. We think the first thing somebody's going to think we smoking or drinking. Or shacking. Like there ain't some sins of the spirit that we got. Yeah. Bad attitudes. Yeah. We done said something. Yeah. Or we done thought something. Right. We can think evil of one another. Don't sit here and lie to yourself that the enemy or some thought don't come to you that you don't think evil of one another sometimes. I know you love each other, and I know you love me, and I know I love you, but I, I'd be lying to you tell, if I didn't tell you that sometime the enemy would come and drop a thought in my head to bring an evil thought. Yep. Something I ain't even asked for. The best of you. And you got to learn not to go with it. Because this is a spiritual battle. I'm preaching truth here. And where the problem come in when you go with it and you dial it up and you talk it up and you speak it out. As long as it was a thought, it was just a thought from the enemy. And I know you love me and I love you. 
And I might be kin to you, and that enemy will, dry, will bring a thought to me about your sorry butt. Yeah. That's what he'll say. And if he'll do it to me, to you, he'll do it to you, to me, because he don't want one accord, yeah. and he'll do it anywhere. Bring up some bogus stuff. What you got to learn is not to talk. Because you're a spiritual being, and when you say it, you bring life to it. Lord, help me with the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth. Let them be acceptable in your sight. They just as bad as if you look at somebody and you lust after them. God sees and knows what's in your heart. But when the enemy come to you with that, you just got to learn to squelch it and say, it ain't nothing I can do about it. And they had to deal with that for 10 days. But when you want power from God, you will realize that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, and you got to pull down thoughts. You got to be intentional and shake your head if you have to. No, no, no. Kev, you sleeping with your loved one. I won't talk about it. Tell your husband to shut up. Tell your girlfriend, shut up. No, 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 no. Because if you tell me, I'll start talking with you. And I want the Holy Ghost. That when I speak, when I talk, it's God talking through me. So I repent, Lord, even of my thoughts. That I sit there and go to base number two with. Be the same like seeing a man or woman and going to the second base with. The first is the look and the second is undressing. Be the same if I thought you was foolish or stupid. First is the had a thought which didn't come. Second is, yeah, he, she is. And God knowing their thoughts, Jesus said. You want to walk in the Spirit, you got to realize Jesus perceiving their thoughts. It's tight, but it's right. Because I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. How can you have the word of knowledge and have the word of the devil working at the same time coming through you? My body is the temple. And Satan, you ain't going to come to me and bring witchcraft words to me and I'm going to operate and then expect God to give me the word of knowledge, which is supernatural facts. Can't do both. Fountain can't give bitter and sweet water. So I'm coming to the place in the Holy Ghost. I recognize familiar spirit. I recognize an unclean spirit trying to use me as a vessel to bring unclean thoughts. And I'm going to act on it. If I do, I become a witch. And the Holy Ghost says I can't use you to give you supernatural facts so that you can create faith. Shut that mess down. So what if it's a thought about you that may not be pleasant and my flesh won't agree? I shut it down because I want the Holy Ghost to come and give me words of edification and comfort. You got to make that choice because any of us can have bad thoughts. And we all have plenty of them. You don't cut this off. Gird up the lawns of your mind. That means put cages and walls around it. Put a padlock on it. Put brick and concrete on it. So the only, just like you do your house. I go to your house now, I can't get in. 
You sitting here. Can't get in my mind just because you roaches and rats can't get in my house. Yeah. They work. Yeah. Dogs and pigs can't just come in my, I get home, pigs on my couch, rats in my kitchen. Because yeah. you gird up the loins of your mind. I don't want every kind of thought coming through. And you can't have the Holy Ghost every kind of thought coming through. So you ain't lusting thoughts, but you let other kind of thoughts come through. They robbing you of spiritual power. Angry thoughts, bitter thoughts. Cynical thoughts. Unclean spirits. And that's why so many got religion but no power. Yeah. But Jesus was holy in his thinking, in his word. And that's why God could use him. For the promise is unto you and to your children. What promise? The promise of the Holy Ghost. For what reason? For the furtherance of the gospel, not to sit in the upper room. The first healing by the apostles. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I don't have any, but such as I have in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. We are supposed to have power to physically lay hands on people and each other to rise and walk. I don't care what our situation is. I don't care if we're old, we're supposed to have enough power where we can lay hands, pray for one another, that we can leap and walk. That's what this man say. Amen. But we have more faith in the doctor than we have in each other. You know why? Because we lack spiritual power. That's all over the land. We lack spiritual power. We lack it. We're discouraged about it coming in prayer, waiting on God's presence for it to come. It comes to waiting on God's presence and come. It literally comes from the throne room of God. Yeah. If we would wait in God's presence and pray, all of our ailments will be dealt with. God will create new bones, new, new parts of, in our bodies. We ain't always had.